Hi, my name is Kashni Balak. I am an IT executive for data and analytics and global tech hub for All Mutual. All Mutual is one of the top insurers in South Africa, but we play across the Africa regions as well. Yeah, we currently have an integrated financial services strategy. Uh, with that, we have All Mutual Bank that will be launching in the next few months as well. So we had three different systems and um, advisor data sat in one, customer uh, data sat in one, and we had elements of um, different sorts of advisor intermediary in a third. Uh, it didn't assist us in terms of our ability to service our organization, service the customer, um, and we weren't able to actually get accurate, reliable data out in any form. So that held us back. All of these systems uh, were sitting on the mainframe. Uh, they were high from a costing perspective, high from a maintenance perspective, um, and were labeled legacy. So really um, shackled, they really shackled us in terms of our ability to move forward. Currently, uh, we have streamlined. So currently, the two intermediary services or uh, master data management capability has collapsed into the Tema SaaS offering. So already we have simplification that's happened across our estate. This year is our big proof point. Um, so that's our customer master data management system. Once we have that, then we have one ecosystem where we can really work on our master data management as a strategy capability because we'll be pushing out reliable, trustworthy data and responding to the customer requirements. Well, Mutual being 179 years, there's a massive amount of modernizations that's taking place throughout the organization. So when we approached the capability that Tema was bringing in, it was important for us to understand what was the success criteria, what was our definition of done, and how are we going to get to success as fast as possible. Um, initially, what we did was we had to prove that the technology works, and we had to prove it based on our data. So we partnered uh, with the Tema team and we got that successfully in. The next step was, okay, let's now start the project. So in starting the project, up front we identified all of the key people that would either constrain us and restrict us and um, also be able to enable us if we got them early on the journey. So we identified uh, the right business sponsors, we identified the right risk and audit people, we identified um, the right business partnership people uh, that was currently working on the manual legacy systems. So that was the, the key individuals that we got buy-in from upfront. So we could manage the governance. Uh, we went in from a place of knowing what we would need to cover in order to be successful. We also made sure that there is a current team that's working on these legacy systems. So how do we bring them on the journey as well and not um, have them feel as though the team is bringing in something new, it's the IT team that's going to bring in a new system, it's about replacing us. It was more centered around there is a new capability coming in, it's going to enhance, it's going to enrich, it's going to position us as an organization to really deliver to the customer at the next level. So how do they get on this journey and understand what this is and also elevate their careers to deliver? If we rewind to 2021, we were very much on a trajectory in terms of just delivering the, delivering the status quo. Uh, where we've transitioned with now is we've looked at out of the possible in terms of what can we do uh, once we hit this next major milestone and how do we use that to, to enable our advisors and our digital capability to really give proper decision-making capability with reliable data. Um, so that's how we've managed the transition and that's where the thinking um, has changed. We've also reduced our foot footprint on the mainframe. That was huge for us uh, because we were very, very dependent on the mainframe. It held us back in terms of our own ability to innovate, our own ability to evolve, our own ability to service our customer base. So already from an intermediary perspective, we have made that transition. So we do know that we're sitting with this capability that's going to be able to trigger us operating in a very different way. Uh, that's going to enable us to push our customer expectations and our customer delivery components. So on the back of that, 
uh, we didn't directly go into let's just go after AI. We knew we had the capability with what we have, but it allowed us to expand our own thinking in terms of bringing in a data mesh framework, data as a product. So the whole, uh, the whole uh, focus for us is how do we enable this organization? There's nothing that we want to say, okay, we, we, we're gonna have the central team and we're going to lock everything in and if the organization needs anything, uh, they're going to have to come to us for the capability. But if you've got your own data capability, but it's, it's not as big to uh, require a data domain team, how do we enable you with that? In the same vein, uh, we have uh, crafted a plan for this year in terms of well, how do we set up our own center of excellence for data and also set up a different center of excellence for AI, giving each one the focus that it requires to move the whole organization forward. In these centers of excellence and why it's key is because you will lay down the, the standards, the guardrails, the engineering capability that's required, but the whole essence of it is not to lock people in, uh, to give them empowerment and accountability to do what they need to do and deliver. Uh, but deliver from a consistency perspective and also de-risk the organization at the same time.